Today we're going to look at a nice linear algebra problem that I found on the Math Stack Exchange. So what is it? Well, let's say that the matrix negative 4, negative 5, 2, 7 to the 100 power is equal to the matrix A, B, C, D. And then our goal is to determine 3A plus B plus 3C plus 4D. And I think there are a couple of ways you could do this. You could definitely use a diagonalization approach. And that diagonalization approach would allow you to find the power of this matrix fairly, you know, easily. But that's if you know something about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. But we're going to use something called the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. But actually, maybe before we do that, Let's look at this like strange combination of these entries A, B, C, and D. And this strange combination makes me think that this object is perhaps invariant for all powers of this matrix right here. In other words, if you take this matrix to any power and you set that equal to A, B, C, D, then this will always be the same number. Now, of course, you could calculate that out for a couple of cases. Like, let's do that for this first case. So let's set A equal to that matrix. So negative 4, negative 15, 2, and 7. And then let's introduce some notation. Let's say A to the n power is equal to A sub n, B sub n, C sub n, D sub n. So our original A, B, C, D are really A hundred, B hundred, so on and so forth. But now let's calculate this object for A to the one. Okay, so let's maybe make this a little bit of an observation. So three A sub one plus B sub one plus three C sub one plus four D sub one is in fact equal to, let's see, It'll be 3 times negative 4, because that's this A entry, and then plus negative 15, that's this B entry, and then plus 3 times 2, that's the C entry, and then plus, let's see, 4 times 7. But now you can combine that all together and you'll see that you in fact get the number 7. Okay, well, let's maybe do one more example of this. So let's look at A squared. So that's just going to be, well, the square of this matrix. So I'll take this matrix and I'll write it two times, and then I'll perform my matrix multiplication. So let's recall we need to take this first row, swivel it into this first column, multiply the overlapping things, and then add. So let's see. We get negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16 minus 30. So that's indeed going to be negative 14. And then here we're going to get negative 4 times negative 15. So that's going to be positive 60. And then it's going to be minus 7 times 15. So that'll leave us with the number 45 here. Okay, great. But actually it's a negative 45. So close one. Now let's see what we get for this next entry. We'll take this row, swivel it into this column. So we'll have negative eight plus 14, that's gonna be six. And then let's see, for this last entry, we'll have negative 30 plus 49, so that'll be 19. Okay, and then using our notation that we have, that should be the matrix A2, B2, C2, and D2. Now let's check this combination here. So 3A2 plus B2 plus 3C2 plus 4D2. So let's see, that's going to be 3 times negative 14. And then it'll be plus negative 45. And then let's see, 3 times 6. So 3 times 6. And then 4 times 19. So 4 times 19. So something that looks like that. Okay, so let's see what we get. This is going to be negative 42 minus 45 plus 18 plus, that's going to end up being 76. So let's see, that'll be minus 87 and then plus, let's see, 18 plus 76 will be 94. 
94, but 94 minus 87 is indeed seven. Oh, so we got the same thing here. But of course, that's not a proof. That's just the first couple of cases. And actually, I think there's maybe a very elementary way to attack this and always get this sum of seven. I think you could probably do it with some sort of inductive argument, but that's not the way we're gonna do it because I wanna highlight this thing that, well, we mentioned before this Cayley-Hamilton theorem. So that says if PA of X is the characteristic polynomial of a matrix A, then if you evaluate A at P of A, you get zero. Okay, so let's see what we can get out of this. Okay, so we will use our same starting setup, but now let's calculate the characteristic polynomial. Let's recall that PA of X, the characteristic polynomial, is the determinant of X times the identity matrix minus our matrix A. So we can do that calculation quickly. That will be the determinant of, well, it'll be X plus four up here because we get an X in this entry because it's the identity matrix minus negative four. And then here we'll have a positive 15 here because again, we're subtracting. We'll have a negative two here and then we'll have an X minus seven down there. But now by the definition of the determinant, we'll have the diagonal entries, the off diagonal, <coughs> the off diagonal entries and then we'll, we, we will subtract them. So we'll have x plus four times x minus seven plus 30, because it's minus negative 30. But now we can simplify that pretty quickly and we'll see that we get x squared minus three x and then it will be plus two. Okay, nice. But now, like I said, Cayley Hamilton says that zero is the same thing as P of A evaluated at A, which is equal to A squared minus three times A plus two. Well, it's gotta be times the identity matrix here so that we put it all inside of matrix world. But let's note that that gives us this nice recursion on the powers of the matrices. So we get A is equal to 3a minus two times the identity matrix. Sorry, that should be a squared is equal to that. That's just by solving that above equation. And then we can descend this down. So a cubed is equal to, well, it's gonna be a times a squared. So that'll be three times a squared minus two times a. We get that from distributing the a on what we have above for a squared. But now we can replace a squared with this up here. So we'll have three times three a minus two times the identity matrix and then minus two times a. So let's see, putting this all together, we'll have a cubed is in fact equal to, well, let's see, it'll be nine a minus two a, that is seven a. And then we'll have minus six times the identity matrix. Okay, so let's put a little box around some things we have. So we have a squared is equal to that, so 3a minus two times identity. We have a cubed is equal to this, 7a minus six times the identity matrix. And then you could calculate out some more if you wanted to. So a to the fourth, you can calculate very, very similarly as a times a cubed, and then apply this rule again. And what you'll see is you get 15a and then minus 14 times the identity matrix. So let's put a box around that. Perhaps we'd wanna go one level deeper. So let's say a to the fifth is equal to, well, again, you could calculate that as a times a to the fourth and then do that simplification procedure. This is 31a and then it'll be minus 30 times the identity matrix. Okay, nice. But now looking at all of these, does that give us some sort of guess for A to the N? Which of course we would have to prove, but if we've got a guess, it's easier to prove it. What do we have here? Well, look, we've got three here, seven, 15, 31. What is like special about all of those numbers? Well, they're one less than powers of two. 4 minus 1, 8 minus 1, 16 minus 1, 32 minus 1. Well, what power of 2? Oh, well, it's the power of 2 that corresponds to the power of the matrix. 32 is 2 to the 5th. That's 2 to the 5th minus 1. 
So it looks like this is two to the n minus one times a. And then we're subtracting off, well, one number less than that. So that'll be minus two to the n minus two times the identity matrix. Because if you take away one from two to the n minus one, you clearly get two to the n minus two. Okay, so let's put a little box around that. And that is in fact, the claim that we'll wanna prove on the next board. Okay, so on the last board, we came up with the following claim, which we'd like to prove now. And that is for all n bigger than or equal to one, a to the n is in fact equal to two to the n minus one times a minus two to the n minus two times the identity matrix. Let's recall that a was equal to the matrix minus four, minus 15, two, and seven. And then we use this notation, which you know we'll get to a bit later, where a to the n power was a sub n, b sub n, c sub n, d sub n. So in fact, that's like defining four sequences of numbers there. Okay, so we'll prove this using induction. Our base case is done. In fact, we did several base cases in order to make our conjecture, which like I said, we'll prove now. Then we need to make an induction hypothesis and go with the induction step. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to one, we have a to the k is equal to two to the k minus one times a minus two to the k minus two times the identity matrix. In other words, we suppose that for some k bigger than or equal to one, the result holds. That's generally how you wanna do induction. Okay, so next up, we will consider the next case. And that is a to the k plus one, which is a times a to the k, which in turn is a times two to the k minus one times a minus two to the k minus two times the identity matrix where we used the induction hypothesis right there. So now let's distribute this a through and that'll leave us with two to the k minus one times a to the squared and then minus two to the k minus two times a. Okay, cool. Now we can apply the recursion that we had on a that allowed us to lower the powers. Let's just recall that real quick. We had a squared was in fact equal to three times a minus two times the identity matrix. That was the thing that we like originally came up with using Cayley Hamilton. Okay. So that leaves, it leaves us with two to the k minus one times three times a minus two times the identity matrix minus two to the k minus two times a. Okay, but now let's like collect all of the things that are coefficients of a here. So we have three times two to the k minus one. I'll write that as three to the two to the, three times two to the k minus three. And then we're subtracting this, so minus two to the k plus two from distributing that minus sign. And then let's see, everything with the identity matrix is fairly simple. That will be minus two times two to the k, which is two to the k plus one, and then two times negative one, which is minus two. Okay, so the identity matrix part, you know, is working out. But now notice we've got three times two to the k minus two to the k, that'll give us two times two to the k, which is indeed equal to two to the k plus one. So let's write that down here. So from this term and this term right here, we'll get two times two to the k plus one. Okay, let's do our color coding a little bit more carefully. And then from this two minus three, we'll get minus one. So that would be from this and from this. So now exchanging out that coefficient, we'll have proven this by induction. Okay, so now we know this holds and we're ready to like do the final step. So finally, we're ready to go at it. So let's start with that equation over there, a sub n, b sub n, c sub n, d sub n equals a to the n, which is equal to two to the n minus one times a. Let's recall that a was minus four, minus 15, two and seven. And then from that, we subtract two to the n minus two times the identity matrix. So we've got something like that. Okay, so now let's just bring this down. So we'll have a to the n, b to the n, c to the n, d to the n is equal to, now let's do this calculation right here. And I'll skip a little bit of the arithmetic, but here we'll have minus five times two to the n plus six. So that's from this term multiplying onto negative four, 
this term multiplying onto one and then doing a combination. Okay, and then here we'll have negative 15 times two to the n minus one. There's no identity matrix part in that. And then here we'll have two times two to the n minus one. And then finally for the last term, after some simplification, we'll see that we have six times two to the n minus five. Okay, so there we have it. And now we're ready to do our final calculation, but instead of it doing it for the hundredth power, we'll do it for the nth power. And let's recall that we expect this to be seven for all values of n. So let's calculate three a sub n plus b sub n plus three c sub n plus four d sub n. So let's see, that'll end up being negative 15 times two to the n plus 18. There I multiply that by three, and then we'll have plus b sub n, so that'll be minus 15 times two to the n plus 15. So that's from that term right there. And then we'll have three c to the n. So let's see, that'll be plus six times two to the n minus six. So that's from that right there. And then four d sub n. So that'll be plus 24 times two to the n minus 20. Okay, so now hopefully some stuff cancels and we will see that it does. Here we have minus 15 two to the n, minus 15 two to the n, six two to the n, and 24 two to the n. And the signs are arranged so that we have negative 30 times two to the n plus 30 times two to the n. That means all of these cancel with each other. So that's good. And then we just have a little bit of a calculation to do. So let's see, what's 18 plus 15? So to me, that seems like it's gonna be 33, and then we'll have minus 26 from that bit right there. So notice that we get the number seven in the end. Okay, so I like this approach in that it doesn't use the mucking around with diagonalization, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. I also like this step that we did a little bit of exploration in order to guess some sort of form for this power of this matrix. I think that's a really powerful idea of like looking at some cases in order to guess a general case. And it's like something that students are afraid to do is make a guess and then prove it. But that being said, since this is always fixed at seven, I think there's probably another way to do it where you simply define A to the N to be that matrix over there and then do some sort of induction on, you know, multiplying powers of A together. Maybe post in the comments if you get that to work. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.